so you hear the bell. Okay, let's continue our session with the uh, uh, Dhamma talk today. Okay, if you just come in, please uh, mute so we can have 100% uh, concentration <laughs> to what we learn together. Share my screen. Okay, so you see my screen come up, right? Can you put thumbs up if you can see paradox teaching of the Buddha? Okay, so I guess you already see. Um, you know, thanks to technology, uh, even in far away, our Bangkok in the forest, we still find the signal. <laughs> we can learn together from this spot in the forest. And I see that our friends are also in different places in the world. I think we have cross continental section today. <laughs> yeah, from America to Europe to Asia. And uh, yeah, my Thai friend also, supporter also come to listen. Yeah, this is a teaching I have been uh, wishing to share quite some time and some uh, the instructor team know that I really want to touch on the, the paradox teaching of the Buddha that in many places in Pali canon, you will find Buddha say things that sound like an opposite and you get confused. What he actually mean by that? It's like a, you know, you have left wing, right wing or central, <laughs> like a, he touch all. And sometimes we get confused a bit. Why Buddha said that? And he's enlightened. He's supposed to have things well connect. So I would like to start with this. Buddha is an enlightened one and also a great teacher. All his teaching are supposed to be all connected and harmonious, right? Like the way he show us inner peace, kindness, compassion, everything just flow. And when you're gonna find anything in his teaching, it bring harmony, it bring peace. But why there are such contradictory messages in his teaching? Yeah, uh, anyone in this room right now that you find those paradox teaching of the Buddha before, can you type number one in the chat box? That, yeah, yeah. I hear this teacher say this, I hear another teacher and they quote the Buddha and it sound not in the same direction. Like at some place, oh, we must strive to Nirvana, we must leave everything. And in other places, he, te he teach how you deal with your husband, how you deal with your wife, how you let your children grow up in the good way. So today I will have uh, our session today a bit different than the previous time. I guess today uh, Barry is our q and moderator, right? Barry? Yes. So I will have uh, like a quote from Pali Canon. And as you know, this is our kind of uh, signature that we want ancient wisdom from the source, not the opinion. <laughs> we want the Pali Canon. Yeah, what Buddha said. So there are gonna be two comparison, one on manner and one on refuge. Uh, after I read that paradox message, we leave some minute. It's like a short uh, section of 
and discussion on that, that. What do you think about that products? Okay, so I will, I will turn the microphone to Barry for that. And then after finish the first one and come to the second one, after I read it, then we can have some reflex on that. And wow, what does he mean? Um, like a guessing, something like that. And then at the end, I will summarize that actually it's not contradictory. Yeah, it just, we need deeper understanding, something like that. And uh, after finish everything, we're gonna have more expensive Q&A session if you would like to ask more. Okay, so ready. <laughs> uh, there will be many. Uh, today is like a first, like a episode one <laughs> of Paradox Teachings of the Buddha. Uh, it's not to see for, you know, like a academic understanding, but to really understand Buddha teaching. That one, you can pass through that paradox. You get a deep understanding. People from different background, different view, Buddha treat them all with certain kind and certain tactfulness. So the first one's about men. Um, I hear some conversation before in our New York class that Buddha, he just gentle or sometimes he's not <laughs> like a hard and then sometimes uh, we realize that, oh, some person, some people, we need to be tough with them, something like that. And some people who like that style, yeah. They try to look for something that match. So today we'd like to show you two parts of Buddha teaching from the same book. <laughs> yeah, Anguttara Nikaya is actually in the same, what they call, like a chapter. <laughs> yeah, it's in the book of the four, but Buddha says something quite different. This part, he talk about gentleness. Monk, there are these four means of sustaining a favorable relationship. What for? Giving and daring speech, helpfulness and consistent tactfulness. These are four means of sustaining a favorable relationship. Yeah, if you learn with me for some time, you know this is uh, EQ in Buddha teaching. Giving and daring speech, helpfulness and consistent tactfulness. You know, it all sound and look soft and gentle, right? Giving and daring, helpfulness, tactfulness, right? Yeah, he's gentle. Buddha, he's gentle and he teach everyone to be gentle. Then in the same book, he talked with horse trainer. Yeah, this is uh, in the same book, but in different part, Kesi, like he called the horse trainer, that is the uh, Pali word for the horse trainer, Kesi. You are the reputed horse trainer. Just how do you discipline a horse to be tamed? And then that horse trainer replied to the Buddha, he called the Buddha Pante, which means senior. Oh, the senior. I discipline one kind of horse gently, another kind sternly, and still another kind, both gently and sternly. Yeah, please follow me. Then he continued, the senior, the blessed one, which means the Buddha, is the unsurpassed trainer or person to be tamed. Just how does the blessed one discipline a person to be tamed? Oh, a little bit misspelling. Uh, how does the blessed one discipline a person to be tamed? And Buddha replied, I discipline one kind of person gently, another kind sternly, and still another kind both gently and sternly. The book of the four, Anguttara Nikaya. The same book. 
one part is all gentle and soft. But in this part, yeah, some kind gently, some kind serious and more tough in a way. Yeah. What is this? Yeah. I turn the microphone to Barry. <laughs> yeah. Anyone has any idea that is contradictory or what do you think of this? Okay, we have a few minutes. If anyone okay. have any, yeah. yes. Yeah, so I can't see everybody on the screen at once. So I am scrolling through and um, please feel free to put any comments okay, in let's... the chat as well. Um, okay. Oh, great. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, okay, does anybody either buy an actual human hand coming up or, um, yeah, or the little virtual hand. I mean, maybe I'll, I'll get things started. Maybe that'll grease the wheels. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, um, thank you so much for this. First of all, paradox is one of my favorite words. I love digging into paradoxes. So thank you um, for this talk. Um, yeah, I, I sort of almost sense that the second, the, the training story may be more, um, that's about when you encounter somebody and, you know, it may be that, you know, you've talked about the three different kinds of people that the Buddha might come into contact with, you know, the one who's ready to understand everything the Buddha have to, has to say, and then one who, um, well, actually the first one is, is really wants it. And the second one is open to it. And the third one is closed to it. So I sort of sense maybe the second one is strategies for dealing with different types of people. Whereas the first one seems like perhaps it's more um, in relationship. Um, like a relationship that already exists, maybe. I don't know. Okay, yeah, good reflection. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Shall we continue? Have any thought come up? Yeah, uh, Marilyn, yeah, yeah. I saw you, your you hand. Have then, yeah. Great, Marilyn, I saw your hand. Yes. Oh, I think we're having the audio yeah, issue with the phone. Peter, can you hear me? Ah, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, so yes. thank you. Um, I, I think it is about um, flexibility that, um, and it goes to what you are, what you encounter, and um, that giving enduring, enduring speech, helpfulness, and consistent and and um, consistent helpfulness can always exist, but sometimes what's needed also, given a particular situation, a person is a, a, a measure of toughness. And it's sort of like making a recipe and you put in more you know, salt or more pepper depending on the situation. Or sugar and mm -hmm. pepper. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> Um, yeah. Madonna? Uh, yeah, according to, yes, yes. Oh, Madonna, I yeah. think you need to unmute. Ahead, Madonna. Sorry, there, sorry, okay, you hear me now? Yep, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. When I think about this, yes. I think about yes. uh, what is the loving thing to do, right? And depending on what the loving, the loving thing to do depends on what that person needs at that time. And at that time, someone may need something gentle and that same person or another person might need something more, oh, there's a plane going over. Yeah. Might need something more stern. So it's a question of what is the loving thing to do for that person at that time? So that's, that's what I think of this is whether one is gentle or, or uh, more stern, and you may be both with, with each person, depending on, on what that person needs at that time. That's the loving thing to do. 
Okay. Thank you, Madonna. <laughs> and Phil, you, I see you put something in the clear. chat. Yeah, Phil, would you like um, to speak or shall I read? I'm not sure where you are and whether you're able to. Oh, uh, you know what? I'll, 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 I can, I can okay. do it if you can hear me. Oh, you're at work. <laughs> yeah, I'm at work, right? Yeah. But it's, there's nobody here. So yeah, I said two things. Um, I said similar to what's already been said, each circumstance and each person requires a different response for the desired result. And then I said, um, when we look at things in a rigid way, then we're close to truly helping. So I think that the well, one of the lessons in this teaching is it just about being open and flexible to the situation and being accepting of what's happening. And with that, then you can determine what's needed if it requires more strength or more gentleness. Um, but you know that requires a lot of composure first before then. But that's generally what I what I was thinking. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you, Phil. Okay, Barry, I think I'm gonna move uh -oh. on. Yeah. According to the time. Uh, oh, and... could we fit one more in? Do you think we could fit yeah, one yeah, more yeah, in? Please. There's one more. Is Sonia? Um, okay. You had your hand okay. up. Okay. Okay. Yes. Oh, I think you're muted, Sonia. Or we can't hear you in any events. Uh oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Maybe for the next one. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. So thank thank you, Sonia. We connect when we can hear you. <laughs> okay. I, I'm gonna show you some. Uh, interesting answer to this okay so you see this part uh, okay let me see so you see the screen come up right everyone the screen come up thank you so in this part uh, he said some person gently, some person sternly, and some person both gently and sternly. You know, when I hear the conversation between our friend discussing that, yeah, Buddha also encouraged that we need to be tough. We need to be uh, a bit more serious in the way we look, in the way we uh, deal with situation. It made me curious that he's enlightened so he's supposed to be out of any, you know, those kinds of action. But today I'm gonna show you, actually I'm gonna read to you that um, in many, many places, in many books, sometimes they quote thing from Pali Canon, but not the whole thing. <laughs> Maybe for, I mean, uh, make things short or make it concise. But if you read, the whole thing we are gonna to read to you, you clearly understand, oh, he's always gentle and soft, <laughs> not stern at all. Yeah, what it does. This is in the Pali Canon, it's just a following section from what I just read to you. I discipline one kind of person gently, another kind sternly, and still another kind both gently and sternly. And the scripture continue. This is a gentleman thought. He expand, he explained. This is a gentleman thought. This is bodily good conduct. This is the result of bodily good conduct, mean physical action. Oh, this is verbal good conduct. This is the result of verbal good conduct. And then this is mental good conduct. This is the result of mental good conduct. And this is uh, the angel like, this is like a human that like an angel. Yeah, this is gentleman thought. <laughs> he point out good things. Yeah, this is the gentleman thought. And then he said, this is the stern method. Oh, this is bodily misconduct. 
this is the result of body limits conduct. Yeah, he called it a stern method. <laughs> this is verbal misconduct. This is a result of it. This is the mental misconduct, and this is a result of it. Oh, this is the sphere of afflicted spirit. This is the negative energy from that action. And when he said the third part, this is gentle and stern method. He repeat both things. Can you follow me? He actually try to be relevant <laughs> to that horse trainer. That, oh, similarly, I have both gentle, stern, uh, also just one kind or both, just both gentle and stern at the same time. But he didn't actually mean the manner as the actual being stern. It's just uh, a metaphor, like a, a comparison. So gently is talking about what good thing will happen and then it inspired those people to do something. Sternly in his meaning, mean he point out what bad thing might happen from doing those bad actions. Nothing stern at all. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way he, he be relevant to the horse trainer. Yeah. Can you follow that? So when you read the whole thing, it's not paradox. Yeah, it's it just the way he communicates. Uh, let's see, okay, just one more, and we're gonna have more Q&A. Uh, refuge, yeah, I just talk about manner, gentleness versus sternness. Gentleness win, <laughs> not sternness. Yeah, it's just a language and communication aspect of Pali Canon that we need to understand. It's nothing paradoxical at all. And refuge, one cell and triple gem. Yeah, I mentioned this uh, in different occasion, but today I'm gonna show you the quote. This is also interesting from the same book, Dhammapada, Kutaka Nikaya, Minor Collections of Buddha Teaching. Yeah, the previous one that from Anguttara Nikaya, yeah, the numerical discourses, this is minor collection. This is one part in Dhammapada. One is one's own refuge. What other refuge can there be? With self well subdued, a person finds a refuge such as few can find. Yeah. One is one on refuge. What other refuge can there be? With self well subdued, a person finds a refuge such as few can find. So we, not something in the sky, not something outside, myself, and in my own refuge. In Dhammapada also, but in a part talking about Buddha and Triple Gem, Buddha said, driven only by fear, do people go for refuge to many places they look for something as a refuge to heal woods, groves, trees, and shrines. Such indeed is no safe refuge. Such is not the refuge supreme. Not by resorting to such a refuge is one release from all suffering. Those who have gone for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, penetrate with transcendental wisdom, the Four Noble Truth. Suffering, the origin, the cessation, the Eightfold Path, the new suffering, this indeed is a safe refuge. This, the refuge supreme. Having gone to such a refuge, one is relieved from all suffering. So, <laughs> what is this? One is one own refuge at one section. And the other section, Buddha said, 
Buddha Dhamma Sangha is your refuge. <laughs> Uh, for time wise, uh, I think I will finish this part and then we're going to throw into Q&A to make sure that things will happen within the punctuality. So why there are such contradictory message in his teaching? I have it shot uh, like a concise here first and then we can discuss more. Number one, language factors. Right? Yeah, the one about horse training. Horse trainer. It's just the language, the play of the language. Yeah, that Buddha talked to each person. He uh, tried the best to accommodate to each person. So with that purpose to help, sometimes people who don't understand the, the surrounding factor, you know, in some uh, book, not from the, the standard version, they, they translate gentleness and harshness. Yeah, it's totally opposite, like endearing and harsh. Yeah, so that makes it even more confusing. So paradoxical things in Buddha teaching, number one factor, language factor. Number two, contents and context. Yeah, when Buddha talked to certain group, like a five disciple on the first one, they almost enlightened. So he talked about leave everything, go to Nirvana, because in that context is right for the teaching. But if he talked to the merchant, he talked to the farmers, yeah, he will not talk like that because the context is different. Yeah, in this context with host trainer, that is how he put his communication to that person. The last one, the depth of Dharma. Yeah, we can discuss more. The depth of Dharma means when Buddha one is one on refuge, this means that person. And then he talk about Buddha Dhamma Sangha, which is something look like external. It's not within a person. But when you practice more, you understand deeper. Princess Tata is the Buddha, but it's not his body that makes him the Buddha. His Buddha nature inside him. It's a software, not a hardware, right? And that software is not for Sitata only. We all have that seed of Buddha nature inside. So Buddha is also us, Dharma, all Dharma come from that Buddha nature. So that Dharma is also us. Sangha, yeah, this is a challenging one. <laughs> Sangha, when someone become a monk, yeah, they change the, the cloth, the physical manifestation, the change. But the true quality of a monk is their ethics, is their pure dharma inside. So the sankha quality also is within us. If we aspire to, one is one on refuge, Buddha Dhamma is refuge. It's not contradictory. It's just we need the depth of understanding to clearly see. I uh, wish you can follow that. I will one more time pass it. <laughs> to vary for more discussion and more Q&A.